All right, let's start fundraising. By now, you know a couple of key details, how much you need to raise, the milestones you need to hit, and you've confirmed that now is the time to get more money in the bank. We've learned about deal mechanics and how to create a phenomenal pitch deck with the help from our friends at Lionshare, a company that helps startups with all things fundraising. But there's this whole other element of fundraising that we haven't really talked about, which is the process. Fundraising is a process. You will hear people say this a lot. It's because it takes organization, tons of patience. And as we talked about earlier, a willingness to hear the word no, a lot. In the next few lessons, we're gonna dive into the procedural elements of the fundraising process. Here's a little more on the process of fundraising, direct from a founder, Cody Barbo of Trust and Will. And what we did differently was we ran a really tight process for the Series A. So we set up uh, all the investors that had passed on us at the seed, they're on our monthly updates. So they saw the progress, they saw us hit that million dollar run rate because I called it out as one of our headlines. And in August, we put together the deck, we put together the diligence and data room, and I sent out emails to 50 funds that I thought were good fits, invested in FinTech or similar companies like Trust and Mall. And I said, hey, we're gonna be in New York City during these dates, we're actively raising our Series A. We use these exact words, meeting slots are filling up fast. We'd love to present to you in the partnership. Do you have a date and time? while we're in town. And out of 50 emails, 45 said yes. And that was across New York, Boston, San Francisco, Bay Area, LA. And then we did a couple of virtuals for those who couldn't meet with us. But what it did is it put everybody on the same timeline. So we started off September of 2019 with 45 meetings scheduled. And after half of those first meetings, they were out. It was okay. I was a little, a little sad, but no's are good because they get you closer to a yes. And as we work our way through October, so four weeks in and then six weeks in, we're down to like six or seven funds. But these are the ones that are spending the most time with us. We've given them a lot of our time. They've given us a lot of their time. It's not just an associate. It's partners with a managing director or general partners that are now involved. And getting closer to what felt like a term sheet, in our case, ended up being three. Three term sheets within a week. And it was the first time we ran, and, and me personally, I ran a process. And running that type of process I wish I did the previous year <laughs> with the seed round, but it worked. Like it really did work. It's a sales funnel to some extent. As this clip shows, creating a funnel is an efficient way to go about your fundraising process. It's helpful as you identify target investors, set up a meeting cadence and complete your due diligence. You can see yourself move closer and closer to a yes, even as you face rejection and ghosting. But hey, it's all a part of the process. You can keep track of your funnel, either with a spreadsheet, a notebook, or the tools provided for you free at Carta's Founder Studio. So what this funnel will look like as at the top, you should have a wide net of potential investors. And as you go through the process, you will narrow in on those that are the most interested in backing your company. Now, your mileage will vary, but let's say you have 50 investors on your list. Out of those, you should have scheduled around 20 meetings. From those meetings, you'll probably continue the conversation with maybe five or seven interested investors, which could land you with one, two, three term sheets. This isn't a guarantee. There's a whole lot of factors in play, but it's a good baseline to keep in mind. So to kick things off, let's zoom right in on the top of the funnel and start by identifying investors. I want to start by sharing one of the best pieces of advice I've ever heard. It was from the CFO who said that whether he was two years out of his next round or three months away, funding was always on his mind. That meant he was constantly engaging with investors, keeping relationships warm, and making sure that the company was his main focus. You've likely heard of ABC, always be closing. But for early stage founders, it should be always be fundraising. And knowing the right investors to target is a crucial piece of that. Now, you might be wondering, how do I know which investors are right for me and which investors aren't? That's the right question. So here are some tips that we've seen work. Target investors 
who will back your company. Yes, that seems like a no-brainer, but don't spend time trying to connect with firms that you know don't invest in companies at your stage or companies in your industry. For example, if you're an enterprise software company, it's probably a waste of time to be targeting firms that primarily work with healthcare companies. Remember, investing needs to make sense for both the investor and the founder. So your needs matter here, which is all well and good, but you're probably wondering, how do I even know if a VC firm specializes in my industry or my stage? And that's a good question. There are some great resources that can give you this information. The popular ones, that we see founders use are PitchBook, Crunchbase, or shameless plug. You can go to Carta.com for some pretty extensive lists where you can search investors by industry, stage, and other filters. So go check that out. Connect with potential investors before pitching them. Ideally, you'll have some base level communication with these investors before the big pitch. If not, here are three ways to spark that connection. A warm intro, obviously in fundraising and in life, one of the best ways to connect with anyone is through a mutual friend or acquaintance. So if you have a first degree, second degree, or even a third degree connection, do your best to work that angle and get in front of them in a polite and friendly way before you walk in their door to pitch. Because remember, even if the introduction is brief, anything that makes your relationship with this investor just a little bit warmer in the room is going to increase your chances of getting a meeting. Networking. Part of your job as a founder is going to as many conferences, meetups, conventions, and other events as you can. These events will give you the chance to meet people, including potential investors, and expand your network. Some of the most impactful connections can come from these types of events, so don't rule them out. Social media. Try curating your social media feeds and look for opportunities to engage with investors or potential business partners on recent accomplishments while introducing yourself and your company in the process. If you do this enough, you may be surprised with the results. Now, these are just tips, not guarantees. Ultimately, the most important thing is to be authentic and do what feels right for you. Because in the end, an investor isn't just backing your company, they're backing you. Okay, so at this point, you have started to build your fundraising funnel and have begun to identify the investors you wanna reach out to to deepen that connection before scheduling a meeting. Now, let's move on down one level further in the funnel and start setting meetings. At this point, you want to reach out to these potential investors through a short and professional email that will cover these points. Reminding the investor that you've met or interacted with them before, highlighting any shared interests or mutual connections, clearly stating that you're actively fundraising, but what if you're on a tight timeline? Well, you should consider going to the top two firms right away and let them know you're trying to make a decision by a certain date. Not ideal, but it couldn't hurt. Once you have your responses, it's time to meet with investors. And if you've seen our last few videos on creating a pitch deck, you're ready to knock it out of the park. But before we get to the excitement of term sheets and closing deals, there's one unavoidable thing to talk about. Listen, as a founder, you're gonna hear no a lot, and you're gonna have to develop a very thick skin. It's just a part of the process because you won't get offers from every VC that you meet. That's just how it goes. Some will take the meeting, thank you for your time, and say they're not interested. Others will express some level of interest and keep the conversation going, but after a while, they might just fade away. But I have good news. Every no is one no closer to the eventual yes. It's true. And this may sound strange, but some no's are better than others. Some VCs do a really nice job of explaining why they're saying no. And when one takes the time to tell you no, 
honestly and with an explanation, thank them. That is invaluable feedback from a professional who is an expert in their field. That's almost as good as a yes. Stay in touch with those investors and make sure to add them to your monthly company update emails. Keep them in the loop of your progress. This will also refill your fundraising funnel. VCs are in the business of knowing what's going on in the ecosystem, gauging progress, and keeping track of trends. So if you made a good impression, even if you got a no, chances are the VC will pay attention to your email updates and it could lead to a yes down the road. By the way, Carta's Founder Studio has a communication center where you can find industry standard templates for these types of emails with all kinds of ways to personalize and segment them. You should really check that out. Okay, now let's shift focus back to those investors who seemed interested from the get-go, those you've been in conversations with after the pitch meeting. There's a good chance that they will end up investing in your company, but there will be plenty of follow-up questions before it happens. And that's a good thing. It shows that they want to know more about your company. They will want to see how your business is really doing. Everything from financial metrics to employment records, tax information, company structure, who else is on the cap table, and who is on your board. And this is before they offer you a term sheet, which we'll talk about later. So how do you keep up with all these questions and requests? Say hello to the data room. The data room is a secure digital space where you can share important documents like your cap table, financial records, articles of incorporation, and more with potential investors. This allows VCs, lawyers, and other important parties to pop open the hood of your company, look at all of the numbers, fine print, and make sure that they're comfortable moving forward. For you, it's just good to keep your company organized and have all your important documents in one place from the beginning, whether that's a hard drive, spreadsheets, or, you know, floppy disks. Okay, maybe not floppy disks. But the key is to keep all your documents together to save yourself the hassle and headache down the road. Setting up your data room is easy. Just upload all your documents, create folders, and invite potential investors to access it. By the way, the Carta platform provides data rooms that founders can use, customize, and share in any way they want. Very, very helpful, check it out. All right, so we're making our way down the funnel. You've identified your target investors, developed an excellent funnel of potential investors, had pitch meetings, got rejected, handled due diligence, got rejected again. But ultimately, it was all worth it because now you have one or several of what the whole process was all about, term sheets. Now the real fun begins. In our next lesson, we'll break down the technical parts of a Series A round. We're talking valuations, dilution, converting safes and convertible notes. So grab yourself a snack, take a stretch, and give yourself a pat on the back. You got a term sheet. So hit the button down there and see what that means and what's next.